There's a lot of power in mapping data. Whether it's to visualize findings for a story, help with your research, or just map your favorite surfing or hiking spots. But what about grabbing data from sites that you might see in a table, like what we regularly see on Wikipedia, and opening it up in a spreadsheet? And how would we even take that a step further and map that information? Well, over the next few minutes in this session, I'm going to take you through three things. How to pull data from sites automatically, how to sort it in a sheet, and how to get that data on a map to visualize what you found. Hi everyone, and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, and this is part 15, so let's get started. I'm going to start this session off with what I find is a really interesting place. It's the airport in Koz in Greece. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, there's something interesting that we can see. The entire airport, or most of it, is very heavily pixelated. You can see some of the roads and the trees and even buildings around it are clear. And yet when we cross over the airport, it's completely pixelated in small cubes. This is really interesting and I don't really know what's happening here, but I can tell you it's probably pixelated for a reason. Are there any places like this on Google Maps or any other map applications? Maybe we can have a search for a map of blurred places on Google Maps and we can see that there's maybe some articles, 25 places you can't see on Google Maps or why, for example, answering that crucial question. But I don't really see a map application on here. And what if I wanted to create a map to see where those things are? Well, I can't really find one. But what I can find is something interesting. It's a Wikipedia piece about a list of map images with missing or unclear data. Now I could probably scour through the rest of Google Earth and Google Maps and maybe have a look for more sites like this and have a look on Twitter and see if anyone else has found any. What Wikipedia has done is created a list for us with coordinates. Now this is pretty handy and what I could do is go one by one and add each of these into maybe Google Maps or Google Earth and start pinning them. But why don't we just have a look at exporting this table into a spreadsheet, first of all? Well, let's do that. The way we can export data that looks like this into a simple spreadsheet, something as simple as using auto functions in Google Spreadsheets. What I've done here is I've started up a brand new Google Spreadsheet and I'm going to type in a very simple term and I'm going to use that term to pull this data from this Wikipedia site. Now what I'm going to do is take my URL from up here and I'm going to pop it in this sheet, but I'm not going to do that yet because what I want to do is have a look for an import function. The function that I'm looking for starts with the word import and you can see a number of options that pop up when I write that. Import XML, data, feed. What I want is HTML. Imports data from a table or list in a HTML page. Let's click on that. It's going to open up a little bracket. I'm going to press quotation mark to open up my quotation. I've pasted my URL from the Wikipedia page. I'm going to close my quotation mark. I want to create a table as well. So I'm going to type in table, quotation mark, and then pop a little zero in there and close my bracket. I'm going to hit enter and let's see what happens. Great. What this has just done is pulled all of this information into this spreadsheet. So you can see all of that data has been pulled into my nice little spreadsheet here. Now this is what I like to call dirty data. It's not very well sorted. Yes, of course, it's sorted in the manner that Wikipedia had it. But I want to maybe start splitting some of these columns. So we can use a simple function uh, like splitting columns and really split up this information because you can see some of these have multiple sections in there separated by a forward slash. Uh, the coordinates uh, may be together. Maybe we want to split them up from 
latitude and longitude and things like that. So let's clean up that data just a little bit. To split some of these columns, what I'm going to do is click on data and split text to columns. Now the separator for some of these seems to be a forward slash, so I might do that one. So I'm just going to replace that one. So now you can see I have a list of coordinates in here, which is really quite useful to use. And I also have decimal coordinates over here, although there seem to be spaces where the enter has been hit as well. What we can even do is split this again, and I'll go through this process and fast forward it just to try and clean up the data before we start exporting to a map. Great, so what I've done is I've cleaned up the data and now I have my latitude and longitude in these columns. So what I'm going to do is write lat for latitude and lon for longitude. What I've been able to do is through Google Sheets extensions, um, there's a lot of add-ons that you can get through Google Sheets and one of the add-ons is called Map My Sheet. This is a really useful one because it basically will create a map automatically for you based on coordinates. So if I just click start here, what I can do is click create map. I'm going to create a new map, select tab one, I'll call it uh, map of blurred places, and click next. What I want to do is rather than choosing address, and this is a cool option with this, this add-on, is you can actually choose an address. So if you don't have coordinates, but you have an address like something street, you can do address and that will also give it coordinates as well but what we have is latitude and longitude uh, since some of these aren't necessarily addresses but might be different areas in the middle of the ocean or different islands or military bases that might not have a specific address so we can just go to geo coordinates what I want to do is select my latitude column uh, so that will be my lat my longitude column lawn and I'll click on next skip the filter you can add a filter, it's kind of cool for countries or anything like that. I would usually clear out some of these columns so that I don't have as much data that I'm not really using. You can control who views the map as well. So if you wanted to make this publicly shareable or not, you can do that. What I'm going to do is click on view map since I've now generated my map out of these coordinates and we'll open that up. And what you can see is I've successfully mapped that data out. Now that would have taken quite some time to map all of this. Uh, I can also click on my satellite imagery here and let's maybe check out some of these spots so we can zoom in on specific locations and see what's, what's going on in some of these places. That one seems to be blurred as well. That's the Toulon Arsenal in France. And now we have a map of a number of blurred places as listed in that Wikipedia uh, article. There wasn't a map before that we had on Google, but what we could do is make this into uh, a publicly viewable Google Maps uh, sheet and publish that online for something for people to see. There's lots of different ways you can do that sort of stuff and lots of different data you can have access to. The reason why using a sheet, uh, whether you do uh, Google Sheets or if you prefer to use Excel Sheets, which also has a similar function, using these sheets means you can add more data in. So if I wanted to make a sheet of football stadiums, but there are only certain football stadiums for, say, Australia. Uh, but I wanted to also include football stadiums for Indonesia and Thailand as well. Then I'd be able to add different data sets to show that. And this is just a really cool way to visualize data, but also a very useful way to visualize it without having to do that manual work of going through each one of these and, and collecting that. What we've successfully done is we've identified this site We've pulled all the data from this table that's on Wikipedia straight automatically into this sheet. We've sorted to the, the data into further rows to clean it up a bit so that we can really get that clean latitude and longitude. And we've successfully mapped that just in the space of a few minutes. Very simple, easy mechanism and, and very useful to show a visualization of where some things are on the Earth's surface. I hope you found this tutorial useful. 
I'll be doing a few more of these sorts of mapping ones as we go through with different ways of collecting data, different ways of converting it into visual format, ways to get it into Google Earth. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next session.